Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar from Unifam. Uh, my name is Johan Hellman and I'm here to talk with you to you about our TMS product. But I'm not alone. I'm here with uh, Pelle. And here you can see the pictures of, of, of us. Very pretty, right, Pelle? Yeah, extremely. So who are we? Uh, Pelle Perlarsson, he has um, a technical background. He's been working uh, with implementing large GMS customers. He's been working in, in development. And these days, he is the product owner for our TMS product, uh, which means that he is steering and controlling development, our development teams on the product. Uh, and myself, I'm the product manager for our TMS product. And uh, my background is in, uh, in manufacturing, working with logistics and transportation uh, in, in large manufacturing companies for quite a number of years. Uh, and before that, I was working um, in, um, in the 3PL and 4PL business with solution design. So neither of us, of us are working in sales but we still think our product is great and we will try to explain why to you today. Hopefully everybody can hear us and see the picture. Uh, if there are any issues with the technology or if you have questions, there is a way to actually send a message to us uh, using a questions form in the GoToWebinar application. You should be able to see something similar to what we have on the screen now on your right hand side of your screen so please type messages there and we will try to answer them at the end of the webinar uh, if we haven't covered it already during the webinar so i think we're ready to go what do you say Pelle? yeah let's go let's go so tms what's that uh, the letters stands for transport management systems uh, and that is a term that has a quite wide meaning on the market. Uh, we take our starting point uh, in the work from Gartner. Uh, and Gartner is uh, an American consultancy firm uh, covering all kinds of different uh, software solutions, uh, making uh, market studies and, and identifying trends and so on. And when they, they talk about TMS, or so transport management system, they focus on systems that target target shippers, so, so uh, parties, companies that are buying transport services for their own need or for the needs of others. So that could include a manufacturing company or a, a 4PL or contract logistics company. Uh, and they have identified uh, six different activities that the TMS system typically covers to, to one extent or the other. So you can see it on the screen here, starting with sourcing activity, so basically make sure that you have agreements in place uh, for your transportation needs somehow with, with the service providers. We have the planning activity, what happens before you actually are ready to, to book. We have the execution, which is the actual booking uh, and everything that is directly connected to that. We have visibility, which typically happens just after booking, during the transportation, uh, sort of when it's still happening. Uh, and I would say a while after that, on, on a more tactical level. You have the audit activity, which is related to the transport cost and freight payment uh, and, and freight settlement. And you have the analytics, which is basically looking at all the data you captured during this process uh, in order to understand what's happening and what's good and what's bad. So this is one way to look at the TMS. Uh, another way to look at it is uh, with this model of five different levels. So uh, a TMS might, could function uh, with different complexity, you could say. The first level is called supplemental, and it's really just a system that has some sort of concept related to transportation and related to shipment. So normally in an ERP or, or, or WMS system, you have, a, you have some sort of, of a consignment concept that you can use for, for planning and for, cap, for, 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 for maintaining information. The next level is called execution centric, and this is a system that has that is built around actual communication with the carrier. Uh, this is our our heritage, and, and a big part of what we do in a mass market offering is related to execution. So basically, booking and printing, you can say. 
expanded footprint is when you start adding more functionalities to your system. So that can include support for planning, support for carrier selection, uh, freight cost calculation, status and tracking, uh, and so forth. So it's so basically being able to, to manage your transportation uh, in a better way. Number four is some a bit of a specific uh, part or a specific level uh, dealing with what's called advanced planning. So basically having the capability of taking a lot large set of uh, transport needs into account and optimizing those related to, for example, cost or, or lead time uh, and making a, a sort of, we can call it a master plan, how to, to, uh, to ship all of your, your shipments in, in a good way. Uh, and some customers have this need. Some customers use uh, freight forwarders and, and, and carriers to, to do the actual uh, operational planning, I guess. Uh, and the fifth level is called globalization. And this is a system that works in a global context. I guess it's uh, clear that, that Gartner is it's an American company. So they feel that uh, being able for a system that works outside of the US is, is very complicated. Uh, but this could be, uh, have, be, be having the ability to work with different languages, with different uh, currencies, different uh, units of measures, and so on. Uh, but if you summarize, and, and, and what's the important point from, from Gartner is that typically uh, when people and companies choose to invest in a TMS, uh, these are the reasons. So they might want to secure capacity, they want to drive efficiency, in the operations, typically around booking and, and status tracking, going into also improving the, the customer service by, by knowing what's happening and being able to improve performance over time. But maybe the most important reason is to actually try to do something about the transport cost. So, so lowering the transport spend. That's how you build your business case and how you, you motivate investment in TMS. So hopefully you have a bit a clearer picture now what we mean when we say TMS. So if you now are faced with the decision to actually select a TMS, what should you consider? So here are a few suggestions. Yeah, and we'll start with the uh, uh, TMS that has a pre-built connectivity and can easily add new carriers. And basically what we mean when we say connectivity is, uh, is connected to the execution part. Uh, book and print and the uh, EDI to carrier and then that you can see the, the shipment status. This is often overlooked uh, and uh, as you go along or roll out your TMS system you uh, you find out that it is deceivingly hard. So you should uh, you should look at your TMS capabilities when it comes to con connectivity. Does TMS have a library with pre-made connectivity? Uh, what is the lead time of implementation, in implementing and uh, connecting carriers services and uh, additional services for your TMS? And also, can your TMS deliver a fast proof of concept and an initial return of investment? Uh, how much uncertainty do you have? Uh, what is the lead time for your proof of concept? How long before you have hard actual facts to build your, your accurate return of investment and your business case? Will you implement a TMS that takes lots of time, money and resources to produce a proof of concept? Or can your TMS roll out a proof of concept on a site instantly with minimal cost? Uh, when your proof of concept is in place, what is your return of investment? I think this is a really important point because also it's what we hear from customers and what also Gartner writes is that that many times it's implementation that is the the weakness of the TMS. It's typically relatively easy to build a business case around an around a TMS because you have a large spend on transport and you only need a quite low savings percentage to to to, to secure the business case. But actually realizing that saving is harder, so having the, the, the initial proofs of, proof of concept, I think is really important to, to, to go, go on them with, with confidence. Yeah. Uh, 
another point which is good to, to keep in mind is how your trans how do you source your transport so because to me you remember that the, the the view of different activities that the tms can support and uh, depending on how you choose to short to source your transportation uh, you probably would will prioritize differently between the different activities so for example if you if you want to to work with trans standard transportation products it's important to be able to select the right product for for a shipment but maybe not important to be able to to plan the actual loading of, of the truck because that's something that's in, included in the service that you purchase from the forward we think that collaboration is, is really important because transportation and transportation management doesn't happen it's not an internal process and it doesn't happen in in a, in a local site or, or in a in a very tight community it's something that happens in between parties so i mean by definition transportation is a physical trans movement of something from one point to another and it's also uh, an exchange of in uh, information between different parties so you, you need to make sure that this really supports this collaboration between the parties involved in the transportation and that all parties will have the needed information so that they can work efficiently uh, in executing transportation. Yeah, and then we come to is your TMS scalable and work in a complex, ever changing, and global environment? And what we mean here is that everything changes. Uh, your TMS is never done. Uh, throughout your supply chain, there will be constant changes. You will have new carriers, new personnel, new sites, uh, system integrations, and so on. So what you need to make sure is how well can your TMS handle these changes? And uh, uh, can your TMS, for instance, handle suppliers? And uh, is it even possible for you to perform supply chain redesign or outsource logistics without breaking the TMS bank. This is uh, pretty important because the, the, uh, the general thing that's happening is that uh, much of the, uh, the IT and, uh, and logistics is being outsourced. So how can your TMS uh, handle that? And uh, this is uh, kind of a add-on to that. Uh, can, is your TMS delivered as a multi-tenant SaaS solution? Uh, we talked about the uh, proof of concept, uh, concept instant uh, return of investment, and scalable uh, TMS. Uh, but uh, if you want to achieve this, uh, you have to have a, a software as a service solution. And software as a service uh, means that you host nothing. You will install nothing, and the only tool you need is a web browser. Local clients and local configuration and hosting. Uh, even if it is in the cloud, if, you, if your solution tells you that you can host it in the cloud, it, it still kills sca scalability. And it adds a linear cost to all the changes you do, as well as your growth. So, uh, a multi-tenant software as a service TMS will give you availability to all the functions, features, and connectivity that has ever been developed for the TMS and all future development. I think it also connects to the whole collaboration idea because what multi-tenant means is that all the customers are in the same instance of the system, meaning so all the information is stored in the same place. It doesn't mean that you have access to other people's data, but it means it's possible to share data between the parties involved in transportation. So, for example, the shipper and the carrier can look at the same data and they can both contribute to the information. Yeah. If you have something that is uh, customer specific or, or even locally installed, it's much harder to actually give access externally to external parties and so on to the data. Uh, and, and also over time, as the network grows, growth, it's hard to know exactly I mean, who, who, who needs to see the data and how, how can you take into account all the potential sort of parties in your future supply chain? Yeah. So last but not least, we think that the TMS implementation should be something that is aligned 
with and supporting your overall digitalization strategy. So most likely your company has some sort of idea around how to benefit from, from digital uh, technology and digital communication. Uh, and the way we see it is that it's that basically digitalization is all about leveraging and harvesting value from data. In order to do that, the first thing you need is to capture the data. You need to capture it with quality. So if your TMS is, is useful operationally, solving your operational needs, you will get the data capture, capturing basically for free. Uh, but if your TMS is not really supporting you operationally, uh, it will just be really hard to, to, and it will be a hassle to make sure that you capture correct data in the TMS because it will not support people in the daily work. So, so you, you need your TMS to work operationally and you also need the data then to be available for, for example, uh, a central uh, BI solution or some sort of, of, of data, data warehouse where you would keep all kinds of data uh, about your operations. Yeah, um, so hopefully you understand a little bit more about TMS or rather our interpretation of TMS and uh, what you should look for. We'll take a step back and just look at uh, reality for, uh, for a few minutes and uh, look at the supply chain. Uh, and the, the, the supply chain that the TMS try to create value in. Uh, and we'll start off with the, the main focus of most uh, companies, uh, which is distribution. And uh, distribution is, uh, uh, nowadays, if you work with consumer products, it's sometimes called the delivery management. That's what we call it. Uh, uh, and it gets all the focus. And uh, why does it get all the focus? Well, we sell products and we deliver them. This is the truth for all companies uh, that sell something, even IT companies like uh, Unifam. Uh, because if we sell a product and deliver it with quality, we get happy customers. Happy customers, more money. And of course, with e-commerce, delivery management is becoming even more important. And another part that, that is uh, vital is to add the return flow. It is uh, basically a part of the distribution, if you ask me. Uh, and then we can move to the part of the supply chain that is not that interesting, or at least not if you ask the CEO or the uh, board members. Uh, and that's when you move to production with inbound, for instance. So this is an example of how, how it can look, a very simplified view. Uh, and we can move on and add another part of the, we can add distribution with the inbound and internal shipments. And this is a simplified example, of course, you can have a thousand of suppliers and more sites and you have returns and direct shipments going more or less all over the place. Uh, but uh, it's interesting with this, uh, when we have this map, drawn out, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting if you challenge the focus of most companies because the, the, the focus being distribution is, is logical, but if you look at Gartner uh, and they emphasize that reduce transport cost is the key value that the TMS system provides. Reduce transport costs. Okay, so look at this map and then you ask yourself, where is my transport spend? And after that, where do I have most cost reduction potential? So let's say you have a supply chain that spends more than 5 million euros on transports. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the customer focus, but uh, Unifam believes that there is a huge untapped potential in cost reduction in the supply chain that feeds distribution. We believe, and I would say that we know, that there is a lack of visibility, a huge black hole of uncertainty and absolute zero control in many parts of the supply chain. 
And we believe that a TMS can easily save 5% of freight spend if you target the right parts of the supply chain. And I think it's also good to point out, and I think it's pretty obvious on this map that I mean distribution is it's by nature one point too many, so it's pretty easy to control that single point. Uh, but for example, inbound, then you're many points to, to, to a few points, and you have a large number of ex even external party suppliers that actually is booking transportation on your account directly or indirectly. I mean, you, you're buying, you're paying for sure. It's included in the piece price or, or, or it's on your transport account, but anyway, you're paying. But how do you know that they do the right choice? And how do you know that, that uh, you're paying even paying the right amount? Okay, another thing to keep in mind, uh, and I touched upon it briefly before, but you really need to consider your transport sourcing strategy because basically when you have a need for a service or product, you always have to decide, do I make it or do I buy it? And it's the same with transportation. You can decide minimal commitment, which basically is buying uh, on the open market, let's say the sport market, every single shipment you go out on the sport market and you get a quote. And you, and you you select the cheapest or the fastest or whatever you need, but you have no commitment to anybody. The other extreme is that you insource everything, you buy your own truck, you hire your own driver, and you start make planning your routes. Uh, these extremes are maybe not the most common. Uh, rather, we would say that most companies are in the middle. They have uh, some sort of fixed relationship with carriers. They have tariffs either sort of open tariffs that they can use without the commitment, or they have committed to a dual source uh, on a lane or, or dedicated lanes that, let's say, I'm using only one carrier for the Sweden-Germany relation. Uh, sometimes uh, people take on a bit more responsibility and say, well, actually, I would try to fill a truck, so uh, let, let me pl plan a multi-stop shipment. So maybe inbound, it's, it's a, some sort of milk route where uh, milk run where, where truck would visit several of my suppliers and, and to pick up goods or, or vice versa on the, on the outbound. Or I will take it even further and I will charter a truck or, or a truck and a driver for a full day or full week and, and, and take on the responsibility of filling it myself. But what's important here is that depending on the strategy you choose, you also has an impact on the system support you need. So, for example, if you go with the spot market approach, the tool you need is probably some sort of freight exchange software. So, basically, you need to get in contact with as many bidders as possible to get the best quote. So, so efficiency in gathering quotes on the transportation would be a main driver. On the other extreme, you need something that we can call a carrier TMS a transport management system that is focusing on the actual production side of transportation. So planning the truck, planning the load, uh, keeping track of mileage uh, and fuel consumption, and, and maybe even taking the, the driver's sleeping uh, times into account. Uh, we call it the carrier TMS because typically this is something that the carrier is very focused on. Moving a bit to the left, if you do some sort of multi-stop planning or have your own fleet, you might need a TMS that has advanced planning capabilities. So basically a TMS that can take a set of, of transportation needs and then do an optimized plan based on cost or based on lead time. But for very many customers out there, uh, they don't really take on this, this responsibility. Rather, they buy uh, what we can call a standard transportation transportation service, which is A to B, uh, consignment level. And then it's up actually to the transport service provider, the carrier, the forwarder, to do the planning and to optimize and to make sure that the trucks are filled. But as a shipper, my only task is basically to have a good agreement and make sure that I book according to it. And that's also where our product has its focus, to, to make sure that the booking process is efficient, with the right information to all parties, and that the users make the right selection when they book. One thing that we have seen is systems that are focused on advanced planning still need a connectivity level, which they typically lack. So we have a lot of, lot of customers that actually want to do advanced planning, and they have a system for it, 
but they use us for the connectivity and the communication with the carriers who will actually produce the transportation service. Okay, another way to look at it, uh, trying to, to put transportation management systems into the context is, is this, this two-dimensional picture uh, mapping on context. So how does the system work? Is it pre-connected or is it a standalone system? And how does it create value? Is it by optimizing or by supporting collaboration? So if we start with the traditional TMS uh, system, it's built inside and out. Basically, it's built around an algorithm that optimizes uh, transportation. So in order for this algorithm to function, you need to centralize your planning parameters. So you need to know all the transportation needs at, one, at the same time, and you also need to know all the cost drivers. Typically, this is uh, simplified in, in the form of, uh, of some sort of tariff structure, because you don't really know the ex exact cost drivers uh, in reality. Based on these, these uh, inputs, you can do a planning exercise, a bulk plan, let's call it. Something that happens uh, synchronously at, at one time for all the needs, and then you try to execute on that plan. And typically, this is quite heavy to implement because you need to build, you need to gather all the data, and you also need to then distribute the result. Uh, and volume drives the, the potential in terms of, of optimization. So you need to have a lot of volume into the solution before you get the benefits. So the benefits doesn't scale. It's kind of all or nothing. You need to have basically full implementation before you can get almost any benefits. Another type of system is what we can, in the Nordics typically call uh, a transport administration system. And this is something that is built from the other end, outside and in. It's built around the carrier connect connectivity uh, historically to fill the needs from the carriers to have EDI bookings. So connectivity is really important and typically well developed, but the planning is really simple. Maybe there are some sort of support in terms of, of shipping. Uh, and these systems are often built in into uh, an ERP or they might be a locally installed system which makes it hard uh, to scale up, give access to external parties or, or use in a multi-site environment. But the benefit is that it's relatively easy to implement because it's pre-connected. The third box where we will put Unifound TMS is the combination of being pre-connected but also supporting collaboration. Our history is from transport administration and we have the query connect connectivity pre-built but our system is also built to work in a collaborative network so basically you can say that our assumption is that the planning parameters would be distributed so each party involved in the shipment the transportation has its own part of the puzzle uh, and our system gives them the support they need to make the right decision when well, they need to make the decision. So first, the, the, the person booking maybe needs to know which transport service to use. And then the, the transport company needs to know uh, how to, to produce the, the transportation in a good way. Uh, and then the party receiving the transportation needs to know when it will arrive and, and, and if something is happening along the way. And then you can add on more, role, more roles uh, around the solution. But the planning doesn't happen at once. It's more of an iterative uh, uh, process. And, and this is a way that makes the system really easy to start with because you have the connectivity, but also scalable because it is a multi-tenant solution. You can give access to user uh, anywhere in the world, basically, instantly. Yeah, and uh, try to summarize it a bit. Uh, we believe that large parts of the supply chain is being overlooked. Uh, we also believe that the focus, or rather, we believe that the reason that uh, large parts of the supply chain is being overlooked is that companies don't focus on transports. The only time transport is interesting is when it can't feed or support distribution in a desirable way. So we also believe that it can be very hard to get attention 
to implement a large-scale TMS solution uh, unless uh, there is a huge ERP project or uh, and TMS is a part of it. The result is often that sites use whatever transport administration, administration tool they please. Uh, I see, or rather we see our job is to make your decision easy. If you are a production manager with no visibility of incoming goods from suppliers, no control over what services are used, and no clue if carriers are performing as they should, we want to prov provide a solution that is ready to roll out to a supplier in a week. Try it out, build a business case based on truths rather than assumptions. If you are a logistic manager that is looking to take control of your distribution centers, make sure that the correct services are chosen, implement new tenders instantly and get full visibility of the uh, to the receiving parties. Uh, if you want to have reports and uh, analytic tools to present to your boss, well, we aim to, to enable a live production test within weeks and gradually roll out to all personnel within months. Decision. Go or no go should be made without any commitment and with minimal cost. Roll out should be iterative with instant return of investment and instant gains. We believe in a TMS where we provide customers with a toolbox with plug and play solutions built in to the multi-tenant SaaS. We believe in a TMS where you gradually move towards perfection and move and save money during the whole journey. So basically what we're saying is that the fundament of our product is can boils down to visibility and control. Yeah. So basically being able to see what happens and being able to do something about it. And not just once, but in, a, in an iterative process for continuous improvement. So you can start small, you can identify some low hanging fruits, you can adjust behaviors of people in your organization and you can see the results. Then you can gradually scale up and improve more and more. And the more freight you put into the to our system, the bigger the benefits will be uh, on the bottom line. So visibility and control iteratively over time to generate a benefit for you. So this is uh, a slide that we use in most of our sales uh, presentations and product presentations. Uh, and it, uh, it aims to summarize a bit of how we, uh, our key values and uh, how we achieve them. Uh, the products themselves, there will be webinars about carry select and analytics, and there is uh, a webinar out on our homepage describing mobile status. So I won't go into, into those parts, but I would like to touch a bit more about uh, the collaboration platform, because uh, being a software as a service allow us to involve everyone uh, and not just the connectivity that we described between the shipper and the carrier. Uh, involving someone uh, briefly, if someone is briefly involved in your shipment movement and they're located uh, half around the world, uh, that's not really an issue if you are a SaaS. Uh, you can invite them with the email or you can uh, let them connect with the, uh, the shipment via Q QR code, via the mobile status. Or they can log in to the Unifound TMS system. We try to build a TMS solution around uh, adapting what you see and what you can do depending on the role. So if you're in a sea agent in uh, Southeast Asia, maybe you just want to see the shipment information so you can create your documents then you attach the documents. Uh, you can do it via an email link because you're a seldom user of the service. Uh, or if you're working as a gate entrance personnel at a supplier, uh, maybe you want to log into the 
TMS uh, system and search for a waybill number to verify that the driver that is trying to enter your premises is uh, has the correct license plate number or name. Uh, or maybe and maybe they want to set the status arrived at location. So we want to connect everyone in the transport lifecycle. We want to be the data hub that constantly add more data and more value to all the parties involved in the transport lifecycle. Add status, cost details, documents, and then spread this information either via instant push of data or via scheduled reports. This is also from, this will be in most of our presentations. It's a simplified view. The core module on top is basically a simplified view of the, the map you've seen before. And then you have part of the core is also the book, print and track. And on top of this, uh, we have the leverage modules. And it's important to understand that uh, on top of the core, we can begin to add features and functions from our leverage modules. And these are pre-existing features and functions. They are proven and already built into our system. And I think this is a really important thing to keep in mind that given that we have this strong execution-centric uh, heritage and the core module, it's really easy to give an operational benefits from using our system so it's not hard to get people to, to use it it's, it's i mean it's it's even it will be a benefit operationally uh, which is really important if you if you want to start for example analyzing transport cost uh, it's really valuable to have the actual booking data available if you start from the other end you, from the invoice you will always have the problem of finding out what 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 did we actually book so, so it's really important to build on the core module and then add leverage. Uh, so, a lot of nice words, but somebody using this today, you might wonder. As a matter of fact, yes, this is a cost, this is a product that is widely in use by a, a current customer base. We estimate around 550 million euros of freight under management yearly, which means so that's the, the freight spend that goes, uh, that is executed using our tool, our TMS system. Uh, we have around 120 TMS customers uh, in one multi tenant sales platform. Uh, these are not the only customers in the platform. We also have mass market applications. We have around 20,000 more customers also using our platform. And in total, so it's, uh, it's around 250 million shipments that we process in our booking engine. So it's really, it's really a proven infrastructure. So we can handle huge volumes, which is good to know because I don't think uh, any, any, any nice business case around uh, saving money will stand if the actual operations fails. So, so, so that has to work first. You can see on the, on the, on the scatter chart here, uh, that the spread in customer size as well as in customer uh, freight under management is quite wide, which proves that the solution works both for really large shippers with really large volumes as well as for relatively small shippers with limited volumes. So I think that that's, that's the, the best proof of our claim that our solution is scalable and can give value also on a small scale and, and you can get a, a, an early proof of concept. I mentioned that the platform is global. We are the leader in the Nordics, but we have 250,000 shippers using it in the Europe. We, uh, for example, is used domestically in the US, just um, to pick an example, 80,000 shipments domestically. Uh, all in all, I would say we have around, or last year when counting, uh, there were shipments from 103 countries to 263 countries. So, so quite, quite a big part of the world uh, touched in, in one way or the other. Roughly 3,000 transport services were used in the TMS solution last year, out of uh, 4,300 roughly total in the platform. Again, picking a number, 49 services used from China. We cover road, courier, air, sea, and rail, basically all the transportation modes. The company behind the product, Unifound, is uh, it's a Swedish company uh, with a very strong 
hold of the Nordics. We have a headquarter in Stockholm, uh, and we were established in 97. So current, last year we had a turnover around 50 million euros. We deliver TMS solution, we also deliver delivery management solution, and we deliver carrier solutions. Around 80 people work in our development, uh, and we do our development in-house. We have a really good support, support function, roughly uh, 20 people working with support, and we also implement our solution ourselves with our leading implementation team. And I think this is really important to touch before, that the implementation is typically a hassle when it comes to TMS, but we claim for us it's actually a strength. And we have examples and we can put you in contact with customers that have, have rolled out our, our service basically effortly, without any effort, even maybe surprising themselves uh, how, how quickly it has been. Sales uh, presence in Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Norway, and Poland. So, hopefully, you have uh, we have sparked your interest a bit about our solution. Uh, we have more webinars planned. So, in April, we will talk about what we call analytics, which is our BI or, or business intelligence uh, solution that is built in into on TMS based on, on ClickSense technology. So we will show you that. And if you are very curious, you can also find some, uh, uh, some short clips uh, on our YouTube channel. You can just go to YouTube and, and search for, for Unifound and probably TMS, or you will find an obscure rock band, I think. Uh, and you can also, in May, join us uh, and hear more about Unifound Carrier Select, which is a really innovative way of making your or steering your uh, carrier selection based on your tariffs, not based on some sort of simplified rule version of your tariff, but on your actual tariff. Uh, steering not only on price, but also on lead time or priority or service level. So you can see the link at the bottom of the screen. You can go to that link and you can sign up for these webinars as well. Uh, so, the only thing that remains is to see if we have any questions. Uh, so, if you have something you want to ask, please type it into the, the question field that I showed you in the beginning. We have one question that actually came last session, but I think it's good uh, to answer it also here. So, the question was, uh, regarding the book and print steps you have shown, how do you manage the different labels carrier specifics? Maybe Pell, you can answer this one. Uh, yeah. Um, so when we try to implement connectivity, uh, and I can start off with if you if you ask TMS different TMS providers what connectivity is, or rather how many transport services or carriers they have connected, you will get any everything from a couple of hundred to I've seen a hundred thousand from some of them, and well. The way we look at it is that we always aim to implement the, the product carrier sell to the mass market. So uh, basically following the specifications of the carrier. So if you look uh, into the document part of it, for instance, uh, sometimes we get documents from an external service, as in UPS, TNT, or, or the DHL Express. Um, then we receive labels and labels from their service. Uh, they are integrated to the TMS product so that it works like any other product. Uh, in other cases, such as Robin, DSV, and other road carriers, uh, they seldom have an API, so we have to create the document and, and, and logic from scratch. Uh, so it can implement, the, it can, it can include uh, both uh, routing codes so that they can uh, dispatch it to the correct uh, terminal, uh, as well as uh, the sequence and formatting and logic that is created. That is the dependent if you want to have a correct waybill or package ID. So, and the same goes with the, the communication. Uh, we we try to support uh, the the perfect solution for the, the carrier. That's our aim when we, we try to implement. Uh, and the, the goal is, of course, that the next customer that wants to use Robin or DSV, uh, they should uh, just be able to add the, the carrier and their transport service, and it should be up and running within minutes. 
So that's uh, basically our, our that's how we aim to implement. Uh, of course, sometimes you have shipper specific transport services. Let's say you you send you have a special kind of need. You send extremely long goods, then maybe you can't use the mass market product. Then we have to define a, a shipper defined service. But the aim is always to create uh, generic uh, uh, implementations of the carrier mass market products. And I think the shipper defined services also has a, another application, which is if you have if you have a strategy to use very many quite small carriers, uh, it might make sense for you as a shipper to actually define how the transport service should work, what kind of add-ons there should be, what kind of weight limits and, and uh, statuses should be reported and so on. And then you can roll out the same transport service or copies of it to a wide supplier base, so ten, tens or hundreds of, of carriers that all works the same way, which makes it really easy for you to change carrier and to roll out uh, the TMS over a, a wide supplier base. Yeah, let's say we have customers that has uh, more or less uh, global uh, support uh, or global uh, carrier needs to to book transport to and from a lot of different countries, and then you can you can basically, as part of your transport, your agreement with your carrier, you say that okay, as part of our our agreement, you have to accept that you receive this uh, booking email and you will report status to us according to this process. Uh, and if you have this approach, that means that you could basically roll out a new uh, carrier connectivity in a matter of days. Uh, so if you have a need of implementing a lot of carriers, changing carriers often, then uh, the shipper-defined service is probably the best option to go. Because no matter what TMS system you do, if you, if you want to implement a pitch-perfect carrier-defined service across the globe for many different countries and many different relations, you will basically just sit and implement transport services for 10 years. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. So um, thank you for joining. We will uh, pub publish a, a recording of this if you missed something, and we will also share the presentation after yeah. the, the webinar. So thank you all, and uh, please don't hesitate to contact sales at unifound.com if you want to learn more, or if you want to book, for example, a demo, or talk to us about something else. Thank you, and have a nice day. Bye.